the National Nine Network and stations coast to coast proudly present The Mike Waltz Show. Join us for 90 minutes of the stars and the stories, the entertainers and the events that are happening today. And now, here's the star of our show, Mike Waltz. Thank you. Hello. What a lovely rowdy mob you've got for me today, Sean. Welcome. Nice to have you here. We have a lady joining us today, and when I mention her name, you'll all say, oh, I remember her well. What on earth she's been doing all these years? Well, today we intend to find out she's going to sing for us too. Miss Dusty Springfield yeah. is here with the son of a preacher man. Here's Dusty. <laughs> Some really would take me walking I threw the back out, we go walking Then they look into my eyes Lord knows the night's a prize The only one who could ever reach me Was son of a preacher man The only one who could ever teach me Was son of a preacher man Everything is alright Can I get away again from that? The only one who could ever be me Was the son of a preacher man The only one who could ever teach me Was the son of a preacher man Yes, he was Miss Dusty Springfield. We'll take a break. We'll have a talk to Dusty after that. Back in the um, back in the sixties, as I said, we used to get goosebumps every time we heard this lady's husky voice and all those wonderful records. Uh, you don't have to say you love me. Just be close at hand. I only want to be with you. Wishing and hoping. Stay a while. And of course, son of a preacher man, which we open with today. Dusty Springfield. Give her a big, big welcome. You haven't been to Australia since, what, 1969, I think it was. 1969, what, right. what, what were your impressions when you came back? Oh, boy, well, it's changed a lot. First of all, I only came in to do one thing. I went down to Melbourne to do an industrial show for Dats, and they were unveiling some new car. Right. And so it was meant to be sort of literally coming to Melbourne for one night. But what's happened is I ran into so many people, old friends that I know, that they can't get me to leave. <laughs> so, <laughs> Came up to Sydney to to uh, you know to, to do your show right. and sort of do some radio shows and things. And I'm having a really good time. Oh, it's lovely to see you again. I remember the first time we met. It was back in the early '60s uh, at the old stadium here in Sydney. You were on a you were one of the stars of a show. Oh God! And I Jerry and the pacemakers. <clears throat> Jerry and the pacemakers. Yeah. I, was it the Beach Boys as well? No, but I, all I remember was in a boxing ring and it had a revolving right. stage. And every time you go through, you don't have to say you love me. It would stop halfway round and go back round the other way again. <laughs> Which is very disconcerting to when you're singing a ballad because you expect to fall over all the time. That's right. It was a funny old place, wasn't it? It used to hold 14,000 yeah. people and it was a big it was, tin shed. It was an amazing place. Yeah. And you told me then a that you... A night to remember. You told me then that your <laughs> name was Mary O'Brien. Mary Isabel Catherine Bernadette O'Brien. 
wouldn't be Irish Catholic, would it, much? Well, it's Lithuanian. <laughs> <laughs> what is that again? Mary? Mary, Isabella, Catherine, with a C, mm -hmm. Bernadette, O'Brien. How did you get all those? Uh, I don't know. My mother thought it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> to be sure, to be sure. <laughs> to be sure, to be sure. What, what um, uh, in the last four or five years, we haven't heard much of you at all. I'd, occasionally, everyone would say, whatever happened to Dusty Springfield type it's thing. Not, it's nice that they said that. Um, I was living in Los Angeles. I'd sort of had a, a good run of success in, in England. Yeah. But I'm a very restless person. When I feel I've used up my time, I'm go off somewhere else. So what uh, what I did was go to the States and work quite successfully for a while there and then just literally ran out of energy. Did you? Because I've been singing since I was 16 years old and the longest time I ever held a job before that was three weeks at the co-op insurance company. So. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you just think, I've had it, I've really had performing, I just there must be something else in life. Was that it, one of those? Yes, it was a foolish thing to think because actually there isn't for a singer. It's the main <laughs> thing in life. Yeah. It took an inordinate length of time for me to discover that and it seemed very self indulgent but I was just really very very tired and lucky enough to be able to stop not everyone has the kind of job that they can do that you know what I mean you yeah. just get stuck with it and what, what did you do to fill in your time did you find you driving yourself mad I wish I could say I did anything profound like pig farming or potato farming in Idaho <laughs> or something like that but I, I didn't actually I just sort of looned around and um, as I say took a great deal of time to discover what I was best at in life at doing. Back to singing. What was the feeling when you, because uh, your comeback to me seemed to be quite a jolt. I thought that's pretty brave. You uh, put on concerts in London. Yeah, I went back. It was the first time I'd sung live in London in six years and they sort of talk about jumping in the deep end. Right. And I can't swim anyway, but I w went into the Albert Hall, which is a huge place. And about 8,000 people. Yeah, and also uh, the Theatre Royal Drury Lane, which is almost as big. Right. And you get that terrible feeling that no one's going to show up. Well, it, it worked very well because it was packed every night and it was a very emotional sort of experience. Yes, you are one of those people who's lucky enough to uh, have that quality that people still want to know for a long, long time. Because the other thing too is although you hadn't made records for a long while, your records are the sort of things that are always being played as flashbacks on radio programs anyway. So despite yeah, the fact you're in retirement, your name was still very much to the fore. I've been very lucky both here and in the States. People did play the records qu quite a lot during the time when I wasn't actually live performing. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got some uh, footage here from the old days. What? <laughs> what? Do, you, what? Do, you want, do you want to see how it was when you came to Australia the first time? White beehive and pink ribs. Let's That's take a right. Look. Let's have we a look. all went through it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how you used to look like Dusty Springfield when she looked like this? Oh God. for the bird with the beehive. It looks like, it looks like me doing an impression of Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> 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 the, the, all that back combing and that, I suppose. You, well, yeah, part of it was and part of it wasn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> those, those, the front part was me, the rest was not. The rest was on hire. Yes, right. <laughs> what about those eyelashes of yours? That was the other thing. You always sort of had veranda-like eyelashes on. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that, the, the people still do that. Look at Diana Ross's. They're out to here, you know. So, the eyelashes are still very useful for stage, but I mean, I used to wear a lot of jet black eye. That's eye right, yeah. you really look like one of those panda bears, if you don't mind me saying, you know, right. black eyes and there's all this blonde that's hair. Exactly, that's exactly, that was the look. That's exactly why I did it. <laughs> Do you find that the public still sort of has that image of you and gets surprised when you don't look the black eyes and the Sometimes, blonde Sometimes, yeah. Well, people resent change, I think, in, in some ways. Um, but they forget that they've changed too. We've all, I think most of us changed for the better rather than uh, the worse. Yeah, I think it's true. There's, there's a funny thing about fashions and looks too, isn't it? Everyone looks so ridiculous well, in them when you look back. I know, when you look back and you look at the shops now, the clothes are so great and, and the mm. things that are available to the mm. public, much, much broader range. You, yeah. you had a, a reputation for being a bit stormy in those days. Would you acknowledge that? It hasn't changed much. <laughs> Still got a good Irish Just do it in different countries. <laughs> I, 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 there was one, one of the stories I heard about you was uh, throwing a pie at a, at a head waiter in a London restaurant. Was it? Do you well, remember that incident? By the time that, that story reached Sydney, it had become a pie. It started out as a very small quiche Lorraine. <laughs> but, um, it was in a, some awards ceremony and there was a, a new waiter and he was trying to do his best and he had his boss on his back all the time. He was a real heel-clicking idiot head waiter, you know, the right. arrogant. Mm. And he was sort of really being so nasty to this waiter that I just let fly at him. 
Yeah, but by the time it, it actually ricocheted off the chef and sort of hit about three different people, which is not, <laughs> not what I meant to happen at all. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder the papers liked it. Because the, the, the big news, and I'd love, I'd love to tell everyone if you don't mind, uh, is that you're getting married very soon. That's right, next month. How about it? <laughs> the blushing bride? It's uh, taken you a while to I'm decide. Blushed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the man? It's about time. He's a Toronto musician. You wouldn't know. And we're not going to. Oh, well, you might. Yeah, just stick around. <laughs> Tall, dark, and handsome. Uh, taller than I am. Very dark and very handsome. Yes, extremely. And you got that look in your eyes. Yes, I'm beaming <laughs> like from ear to ear. So that's next month. Yeah. Well, congratulations from all of us. Thank We've you got a little uh, something for you just to take home while you're here in Sydney. Oh, I thought you were going to throw a cake at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we couldn't Thank get a cake. Thank you much. <laughs> I much appreciate it. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the canteen was out of Quiche Lorraine, so we thought we'd give you some flowers instead. They're absolutely gorgeous. Well, it is lovely to see you, and do come back soon. I know that you've got lots of fans in Australia. I'd love to see you in concert. I'm dying to come back, hopefully so in the why autumn. why don't you come back so. for us? You will, in autumn. Oh, yeah. Well, whatever. That's your spring, isn't it? What, uh, October, November, sometime like that. That's your spring? Yeah. That'll do. Yep. We'll we'll put it on for you. <laughs> if you want spring in October, November, you can have it. Right. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing you, and I hope we catch up with you again. Thank you very much. Dusty Springfield, ladies and gentlemen. That'll be great.